Ashoff the Younger has stated that much of this is the existing practice of the Hugo administrators. However, what we have nominally done over the years is if something is eligible in two categories, the usual practice is to place it in the category with the most votes that it receives. The, the problem I have with this amendment is the last line, after consulting with the author, insofar as it is possible to do so. We closed votes on May, March 10th this year, announced them on April 4th. We did not have the ballot finalized until April 2nd. If we're in a situation where something qualifies in both categories and we're waiting to able to contact the author before we make decisions, and authors live all over the world now and sometimes hard to track down right away. That means we don't know who is going to be eligible if the author decides it's going to be in category A or B, who the next person is that's in that category that would move up and we wouldn't be able to contact them to find out if they were uh, uh, agreed to it. So this really puts a um, uh, real time crunch on the Hugo administration, which is already time crunched. I have no problems with the general idea of this. However, I think that requiring us to get uh, contact the author before making the decision could cause us real problems. Yes, over here. Uh, yes, uh, Miss Neal. Uh, th this is in, in favor of the proposal, correct? Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's correct. My name is Terry Neal, and in response to the previous speaker, I point out that the language of this amendment says that the World Con Committee shall determine, uh, in consultation with the author, insofar as it is possible to do. Uh, let's see now. Yes, against... I'm going to. I'm going to ask. No, uh, uh, Dave. I, I, I'm going to call upon you as a Hugo administrator, because if you want it. He did stand up. He just gave it away. Up uh, to amend. Okay, um, you're going to uh, move an amendment. <laughs> Mr. McCarty. My name is Dave McCarty. I move to amend the, uh, the, the current proposal to, dr to drop uh, trying to contact the speaker and instead replace that with it shall be moved into the category in which it gets the most nominations and choose th and that way we are supporting the will of the voters, of the nominators. I'm working on exact wording of what the member has moved. That's good. I only roughly have it. I believe you are moving to amend this so that it would read, if a work is eligible in more than one category and if the work receives sufficient nominations to appear in more than one category, the World Con Committee shall determine in which category the work shall appear based on, hear me out, don't try and read, up to that point based on the category in which it receives the most nominations. That, that is substantially what I think, yes. I agree with that wording. That would strike out the words, after consulting with the author of the work insofar as it is possible to do so under the provisions of section 3.9, and insert, what did I just say? <laughs> based on the did, did, you're not helping, you're not helping. Based on the category. Based on the category in which it receives the most nominations. That's why there's a secretary here. Thank you. I appreciate your help. I really do. Okay. There's, is there a second to Mr. McCarty's amendment? Second. Mr. McCarty, uh, first of all, how much, amend, how much time? There are 114 are seconds total remaining in debate. Okay. Let's make it 120 seconds. So one minute each way in favor and opposed to the amendment. I, I believe there's a question. Does you want to yield? It's using your time for to speak in favor of it. I, I will yield for a The question. member will come forward and, spe and, and give the question. and this fills out bingo cards from yesterday. Helen Montgomery, my question would be either for you or for Mr. Lorenz. 
as the process stands right now, you guys have to contact potential nominees anyway in order to get their acceptance. Why would this be make it any different? The question is, oh, okay, you're doing it to Mr. McCarty, yeah, because Mr. Uh, McCarty has the floor. I, That's who I, can, I can answer. Uh, but I can answer the. I, I can competently answer the question. The reason that this changes the process is this means that we can't move on and contact the next nominee until we've heard back from the author, which can take up to the day before we have to nominate the ballot. It's it, it can cause a crunch. Uh, another question. You yield for another question. One more question. Harry and Larry, I'll try to make this quick. So if an author were nominated in two categories, say YA and Best Novel, uh, and they got more nominations in YA, would you tell them they were also eligible in Best Novel so they could withdraw the YA? Or would they not know that they could have been in the other category? <laughs> that, 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 that is under the judgment of the administrator. So I could say how I would do it, but I don't believe that my answer would be consistent upon, upon how every administrator would do it. So I don't think my answer would be meaningful. Mr. McCarty, would you like to speak actually in favor of your own amendment? You yes. have seven seconds to do so. Uh, could we, would there be objection to giving him 30 seconds? The, uh, you have 30 seconds. All right. So um, the, 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 the concern that John and I have is that it's difficult and to, to contact everybody in a timely manner and get the ballot nailed down. And until you're trying to do it in the hours that you have, uh, it's, it's a lot more difficult than you imagine. Having to wait on an answer back from somebody before we know what to do with the next nomination causes significant problems, especially in cases where the one trails to the next trails to the next. So letting, giving the administrator definitive direction on do this in the manner that we actually do it anyway would be a good thing. Time has expired in favor of the amendment. There is one minute of debate time against the amendment. Is there anyone who wishes to speak against the amendment? Ms. Secor. I'm Kate Secor. I continue to have really grave concerns about the superset subset problem. And if we're not contacting the creators of the works to tell them that there's a problem, this is just going to make it worse. Because now you've got someone who could have been a nominee, and somebody else who created the work that their work appeared in has decided that they don't get to. That seems really odd to me. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak against the amendment? Mr. Da Mr. Jared Dashoff. Yield. Yield. Uh, yielding. Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, Ms. Hildebrand. Leanne Hildebrand. And my only concern about this is when dealing with absolute vote totals, that I can imagine a situation where a work receives a greater percentage, so has a more dominant, uh, was liked by a greater number of percentage of people within one category than in another, but because another category has a larger number of folks who vote for it, receives more votes, and therefore was more liked in the smaller category. That's my concern about making this vote numbers. Nomination numbers, excuse me. Time for debate has expired. On the amendment to strike out after consulting the author of the work insofar it is possible to do so under the provisions of section 3.9 and to insert uh, the, uh, substantially uh, the work that receives the most nominations. All those in favor of the change to the proposal, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed to the change, hands down. The affirmative has it, the amendment to the proposal is adopted. There is no time remaining for debate on this proposal. Now, he, uh, does, uh, yes, uh, <coughs> excuse me. C come and state the amendment, which will uh, be undebatable, unless there's an amendment, unless uh, debate time is extended. Dr. Adams. Uh, Andrew Adams, uh, I believe that the, I would like to propose amendment substitution where it says the Worldcon Committee, I believe we should say Hugo Subcommittee. Uh, the chair rules the motion out of order. The, the Constitution states that the Worldcon Committee has the authority to do this and, and, and has the authority then to irrevocably delegate it to a Hugo subcommittee. It does not have to create a Hugo subcommittee, and they have not always done so. The motion is out of order. On the, motion to on the proposal to adopt the amended 3.1.5 multiple nominations, is there anyone unclear on what the revised wording is? Yes. Very well. I need the Secretary's help on this. Thank you. Section 1, insert the following after Section 3.2.8, which is 
no work shall appear in more, one, more than one category on the final award ballot. Section two, insert the following after existing section 3.8.6. If a work is eligible in more than one category, and if the work receives sufficient nominations to appear in more than one category, the WorldCon Committee shall determine in which category the work shall appear based on the category in which it receives the most nominations. Is there any question upon what we are voting on at this time? All those in favor of this constitutional amendment, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. Hands down. Question privilege? I am. All right. Let me take the vote again. Uh, it's pausing between the two halves. That's the time. All those in favor of the constitutional amendment, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed to this constitutional amendment, raise your hands. Hands down. The affirmative has it, the constitutional amendment is passed and is sent on to next year's Worldcon for ratification. I think we'll have time for one more and I believe we need to take a cartridge change, yes? Yes. This meeting is in recess for not more than two minutes. Don't get up. <laughs>